Now you see there are some options across the top, main, advanced, security, boot, and exit. Let's look through these real quick. We can see our main screen shows us the system time, the system date, whether we have a, a legacy floppy disk in here for A and B, and what type of floppy disk it is. And you can scroll through these. If you get focus on this, you can scroll down what your primary master drive is going to be. And if you hit Enter, you can even drill down into that, where it shows you you can either specify to choose automatically what type of drive this is. Or if you can drill down into other pieces, you have options down here. It even tells you that you can change values here to see what's going on. Or you can simply select it by hitting Enter. And of course, Escape takes you back to the previous screen. So you configure your drives in here. You can configure keyboard options in here, repeat rate. Again, this is very hardware centric. We are configuring how your computer uses the hardware that's connected to it. These are things normally you just never see because they are all hidden, if you will, inside of this BIOS configuration. The boot time diagnostic screen is disabled. Maybe you'd like to see diagnostics. You can change those things. If I hit Escape uh, and go back up to this top menu, you can see there's an advanced menu where you can specify things like the cache memory that is in use and how it is used. You can configure the I.O. device configuration for your serial ports, your parallel ports, and your floppy disks. A lot of really detailed hardware information in here. And you're noticing as you go through here, EEC configuration. If all memory in this system supports ECC, then this selection selects from none, checking, checking and correction, or checking with correction with scrubbing. There's a lot of different options here. You would never change how your system uses memory unless you really, really know what you're wanting to do here. Do you know what type of memory is in your system? What does the memory manufacturer say that you set your BIOS to? That's the setting that you would put in here. You would never go into your BIOS and randomly select something to change and maybe change it just to see what happens. Because you could create some very, very serious problems with your system being stable, with it being able to boot properly. And you certainly don't want that to happen on a production system. So as you go through this setting and you look at these different settings, whether they're for the main, the advanced, if I hit the right key, I'll go to security. These are some very, very specific configuration uh, pieces that we would put in here. Things like security we'll talk about in our security modules for setting a supervisor password and a user password so that when this system boots up, it may prompt you to put in a password just to start the computer or give you a password just to change things inside of the BIOS. This becomes really useful in large environments, and it's all configured inside of this BIOS configuration. And lastly, and probably the one that you'll use a lot on your system, one that you may change quite a bit or, or mess around with, change a little bit in your computer, is what devices boot first. In this configuration, it will start with removable devices. It will move to the hard drive, then check the CD-ROM drive, then do a boot from the network. Now with any of these, you can use the plus sign and the minus sign to move things up and down. If you have a live CD, and you want this system to run that live CD instead of what's on the hard drive whenever it happens to be in there. We'll hit our minus sign. Uh, and or plus sign rather, and move it up in our list so that it goes to removable devices like your USB and your floppy drives first. Then it goes to the CD-ROM. Then it goes to the hard drive, and finally to the network. That perhaps is a better configuration for us. Now you'll notice at the bottom of the screen it says save and default, save and save and exit as the as the configuration F10. If we messed any of this up, we could always press F9 to go to the defaults, and it would reset everything that we did. So don't feel that you can really mess things up too much, especially considering this is in a virtual machine. We can always go back in here and mess around with that. Let's press F10. And it says save configuration changes and exit now. Why that sounds good to me, we'll hit yes. And now the system will reboot with all of those configuration settings before. Now, since we don't have an operating system, it's not going to start any operating system. It went very quickly through your removable devices. It saw there was nothing in your CD-ROM drive. It saw there wasn't anything in your hard drive. and went right to network boot. So this is how you would go in and change BIOS configurations, play around with settings, and just get more comfortable with what you can expect to see inside of a BIOS of a computer. Because some of the questions you'll get on your CompTIA A plus exam is, I need to set a password that will restrict people's access into the hardware of this machine. Where can I set those? It would be in the BIOS. We can see right there where we would configure all of those settings inside of our computer.